This video is brought to you by KEH, the world's best place to buy and sell used gear. I always check there first to get the best deals with a warranty, with a return period. I also sell them all my gear. Use these links to get bonuses for selling or discounts on buying. The Sony a7 IV is an amazing camera for portraits, sports, wildlife, weddings, landscapes, just about anything. It has a brand new 33 megapixel sensor and we've never tested it. These sensors can have lots of little nitpicky things go wrong like autofocus sensors that reflect light in low light, sharpness ruining AA filters, banding under artificial lights, high ISO noise. We're gonna test for all of those things against the Sony a7 III, the predecessor, the Sony a7R Mark III, a higher megapixel camera from Sony that's at about the same price point now because it's a little bit older, and the Sony A9. Somebody requested that because they might want a sports camera and they want to see if the pictures are any better. I'm also going to test it against the Canon R6 because, well, it's only 20 megapixels. It happens to be the exact same price. Let's get started. Let's look at optimal image quality at the base ISO of the a7 III and a7 IV. Notice that these are both lit entirely by a flash and have similar exposures. Even though the shutter speed is different, the a7 III did not sync to 1 250th of a second. That's a win for the Sony a7 IV. Zoom in on some fine detail here. It's almost impossible to spot the difference between 24 megapixels and 33 megapixels. But if we really squint at some of these letters, they're a little bit clearer on the a7 IV than they are on the a7 III. Shadow noise at the base ISO seems similar between both cameras. Compared to the 20 megapixel Canon R6, the Sony a7 IV shows significantly more detail. These letters are significantly clearer. The shadow noise in the background is a little bit better on the Sony too. Compared to the 42 megapixel Sony a7R 3 we can see the a7R 3 without the AA filter does indeed extract significantly more detail. For landscape photographers looking for the sharpest possible prints, the Sony a7 III is a better purchase. The text here is downright mushy on the a7 IV. Compared to the Sony A9, the A7 IV shows significantly more detail. The Sony A9 has a really heavy AA filter and only 24 megapixels, and as a result, that really crushes this detail. Thus, if you're a landscape photographer, the A7 IV is a much better choice than the A9. Let's compare the low light, high ISO performance of the A7 III and IV at ISO 25600. Both these files are raw processed in Adobe Lightroom Classic. First notice the histogram in the upper right corner. As I switch between these two pictures, the histogram moves significantly, showing that even though they have the same camera settings, they came out with different exposures by about one third of a stop. The A7 IV is about one third of a stop darker, just supporting the fact that ISO is completely fake. Let's adjust that exposure so they're approximately the same. Zooming in and scaling to similar proportions, there's really no difference. Maybe the grain on the a7 IV is a little bit more extreme, but the text is also slightly more readable. The Canon R6 is our current low light champ and it looks like it stays that way. The text here is a little bit clearer. There seems to be a little bit less noise in the background. Canon continues to rule low light. The a7 R3 is a little bit better than the Sony a7 IV in low light. Things are a little bit clearer because of the higher megapixel count and the grain seems a little bit less intrusive. The Sony A9 is probably the worst in this group because the sensor is optimized for fast readout speed. So we see weird little blotches of color and pretty obtrusive noise and not a lot of sharpness. Still admirable for ISO 25600. I have good news or maybe it's bad news. It's officially the holiday season. If you wanna raise some money, sell your unused camera gear to KEH. Use this link and this coupon code to get a 5% bonus on the money that they send you. KEH will clean up your gear and give it a whole new life with none of the hassle of trying to sell it yourself. We've been scammed out of like thousands of dollars trying to sell things online directly. That's why we gave up and just sell all our stuff to KEH. I always go to KEH when I'm buying any piece of gear to see if they have it in stock. And if they do have it in stock, I buy it right away because sometimes I want to sleep on it and somebody has bought it out from under me before I can get to it in the morning. If you buy something, use this link and this coupon code to get 5% 
off. Everything has a 21 day return period and 180 day warranty. You know why I love having KEH as a sponsor? Because every time I do a spot, I get a bunch of comments saying, I use KEH and I just had a great experience. It's just like, it's a good product and I want to connect them with you. Thank you KEH for sponsoring this video. Now let's test dynamic range. This is critical for wildlife photographers shooting high contrast subjects against brightly lit skies. For landscape photographers who might shoot a sunrise or sunset into the sun, there is never enough dynamic range in these situations. The photo you see here is of that same bookcase, but underexposed by about eight stops. Let's bring back that exposure. This example from the Canon R6 is amazing. Can you believe how much detail was invisible in the original photo? I exposed the photo for this corner, the darkest corner. Let's compare it to the Sony a7 IV. The text on the Sony is slightly more readable and there's slightly more detail in the deepest shadows. So it's a slight win for the Sony. The older a7 III clips the shadows at a much higher level. Thus all of this detail is completely lost and this is completely silhouetted. Whereas you can extract a lot of detail from the Sony a7 IV. The a7 IV also shows much more clearly readable text. Compared to the higher megapixel Sony a7R3, you can see the a7R3 has a lot of color noise in the shadows. Despite me trying to correct this, the a7 IV just generally looks better. The a7 IV is also showing more detail. The a9 is optimized for fast readout and never had good dynamic range, but you can see here the a7IV's dynamic range is significantly better, showing significantly sharper text and way more detail in the deepest shadows. Big win for the Sony a7IV. This is the legendary flickering light of doom to test readout speed and rolling shutter. The more it flickers, the slower the sensor's readout speed. The winner by far is the Sony A9, followed by the Canon R6. They both have excellent sensor readout times with minimal rolling shutter. All the other cameras are bad. The Sony a7 III comes in third place, followed by the Sony a7 IV, and finally the Sony a7R3's high megapixel sensor took the longest to read out. Fortunately, rolling shutter and banding is primarily a concern when using the silent electronic shutter, so using the mechanical shutter mostly alleviates this problem. There you have it, the a7 IV is a good well-rounded camera. We didn't find any fatal flaws and trust me, I would love to put up a clickbait title about how banding ruined the a7 IV. Unfortunately, it didn't happen, but I'll try again next time. And a special thanks to KEH for sponsoring this video. Use this link to sell your gear to KEH and use this code to get an extra 5% bonus. And if you want to buy just about anything, cameras, lenses, tripods, lights, if it's photography related, they probably have it. Use this link to visit KEH and shop their store and use this code to get an extra 5% off. Thanks for sponsoring us, KEH. Don't forget, everything comes with a 21-day return period and 180-day warranty in case something breaks, which it probably won't. Bye.